not old enough to play for the NFL and understands how good he is, the XFL could be an option. We'll talk about it coming up here on Off the Bench over the next hour and a half. We'll be joined at the uh, eight fifteen segment by Tommy Moffitt. We'll talk about what his son accomplished last night, Clay Moffitt, on the bump for LSU as the Tigers move to twenty and nine on the season on the uh, on the diamond. They'll face South Alabama tonight. We talk baseball each week here on Off the Bench with former big leaguer and uh, Baton Rouge native here. Uh, Chad Durbin here on Off the Bench. Durbs, good morning. How are you, man? Man, I'm good. I'm uh, you know listening to y'all talk this morning and uh, thinking about the uh, the whole uh, Ross uh, debate. I hadn't read that uh, article yet, but um, I think about Williamson. Zion Williamson goes to Duke, which is a superstar machine of you know. There's probably 15 or 20 of them in college basketball, and there's probably 15 or 20 of them in uh, in college football. And you become a, a superstar you know, through the exposure you get in college, you come to LSU and you're Leonard Fournette and you're on the front page of magazines and, and you end up getting paid on the back end. But if you go to that XFL equivalent, you get paid a little bit and then fall out of the limelight unless somebody does an extensive amount of marketing for you, um, what's the end game? I mean, you get paid a little bit up front, but um, Williamson became, you know, a celebrity. Um, because of Duke and because of his time in college. So that's my two cents for 30 seconds. It's an interesting debate, and it seems like your sport has has mastered the minor league system and being able to develop young talent and have them prepared for for the bigs, for the big time, for the major leagues. Um, Do you believe that there is a place for minor league football with the way that the system is set up? Yeah, I think it's a... Or is college football the minor league system? I was going to say that, you know, you, you go for three years and play college football. Um, you've essentially, um, you, here's the difference between, um, you know, college football and major league baseball uh, and its minor league system is you can still get paid and then go to the minor league system. So you get, if you are one of the top two round guys, you're going to get somewhere between 600,000 and 10 million plus. Um, and, and, but then you go, eat some humble pie for, uh, you know, whatever time frame it is. I mean, even Alex Bregman, who is a superstar now and was a stud in college, had to go and ride buses yeah, and sit down next to a guy making $850 a month and see what his life is like. And I don't know that, the, you know, I, I know that's how you live in college for the most part. Um, but, you know, you go from one extreme to the next, whereas I think there's an onboarding system with seven levels to the minor leagues. Um, I don't know if that's uh, – that's less of a, uh, you know, they don't do it because that's what they're trying to accomplish. Guys aren't ready at 18 to go play in, in the major leagues. And um, in football, I'm seeing some guys physically that look like they're almost capable, but mentally they might not be. So, um, you know, I do I do think there's a room for it, but I don't think it's just a – I don't think you're mapping it after an MLB uh, ecosystem. Yeah, it'll, I mean, look, I, I think that we got to see this play out. In real time, there, there's too many different ways that it could go, just from a theoretical standpoint. But um, there, there, there could be something there. How much money are they offering? Right, that's going to be yeah. one of the yeah. keys. Like, like to uh, why am I blanking? Clemson's quarterback just won that. Trevor, Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence, right? It's a freshman. Theoretically, after this upcoming football season, he would be eligible for that 2020 XFL draft. Does he make a move there? I don't know. It's something to keep an eye on. Uh, we're talking to Chad Durbin. Let's. Talk, Chad, about some baseball, though. Former World Series champion Chad Durbin. The LSU baseball team in action last night. They win 9-0, to a midweek game. But really, let's go back to last weekend, Chad. Taking 2-3 or three off of Mississippi State. Tough environment in Starkville. Uh, what were your takeaways, your kind of main takeaways, from what the team accomplished? I think, uh, you know, splitting um, the two first games, and then Eric Walker stepping up and, and doing um, more than he's done so far, a little more zip on the fastball, able to separate the change of his off speed and his fastball just a little bit better. And that's just going to improve as his arm comes back from, uh, from surgery. Um, but um, I think, you know, you needed to win one of those first two games. They have two good starters. We have two good starters. They're, they're, playing, they're playing LSU at their place, new stadium. Their team's loaded. Our team's loaded. And you just needed to split those first two games, and, and they did it. They found a way to do it. Um, I think Mississippi State, you know, it seems like every year they bring out the best in LSU. Um, you know, maybe not maybe not the best in LSU fans uh, because, you know, you the rivalry and you start, you know, hacking at each other and stuff like that. But I really like the way the team came out and just competed inning to inning the entire weekend where 
Um, I've seen a little bit this year where they're not taking off. I mean, they're, they're, they're quality players and all that stuff, but I just saw them compete um, all the way through a weekend and go out there, win two, two of three in a tough environment, um, kind of prove to themselves we can go win on the road against one of the best teams in the country. So I thought it was great for them. And when you look at Eric Walker specifically, coming back after a year recovering from surgery, kind of been taking baby steps towards this moment, he has a old-school, dominant Eric Walker performance. How important is that to him trying to carry that forward in the rest of the year? Well, I mean, I had a Tommy John surgery, and I got back to the big leagues inside of a year. But even if my velocity said 92 or 93, it didn't have the same, you know, I don't know, the same jump on the back end of the ball, which now would be equated to spin rates and all that crap. But um, I just couldn't get the ball. I'd get the ball to the same spot, and a guy hit a double. And, man, you know, that used to be something a guy either missed or popped up. Um, and it came down to confidence, I'll be honest. Um, and as I got further and further from that year out um, and, and started to throw the ball a little bit better, get a little more separation, like I said, on uh, on the pitches. I'm throwing 92 and I've got a 79-mile-an-hour changeup um, versus 83 or 84 and I'm throwing 91. Um, that, that's kind of what I'm seeing out of him. He's popping 89 again. Um, the the changeup has good late action and there's separation in, in speed. Um, but confidence goes a long way, and you know he can pitch. You know he's going to keep you in a game. And for your number three, going against their number three, um, I, I feel advantage LSU almost every time. Ted Durbin, third rounder out of high school back in 1996, 13 years in the show, a World Series championship with the Phillies back in 08. Every Wednesday here with us on ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and Alexandria. I, I wanted to ask Maneri yesterday. I never got around to asking him this, but was – the offense, the strikeouts concerning for him because they struck out 17 times on Thursday night and they fanned throughout the weekend, but they scored a bunch of runs. And for you, I'll ask, does, does college baseball or specifically LSU offensively, do they, do they imitate MLB now, like the way that the game is played, whether it's a strikeout or a home run? It seems like that's the way that LSU kind of has been playing offensively here of late. Well, I mean, you, you, you see that in almost every sport. You see, you know, the, the trickle-down effect and, and how to apply it and teach it and instruct it as a coaching staff uh, or fight it. You know, you might have your own philosophies and you're fighting um, these hitting coaches and gurus and summer league uh, hitting coaches that may have the right approach, but it's not your approach. So you've got to reteach guys. Um, and the truth is the Friday, the Thursday-Friday guys for Mississippi State are really good. Um, with, with plus stuff, the lefty, and then I mean they, they you know, first round guy on on Friday, um, you're going to strike out against that type of uh, those types of arms and those types of pitchers, and you know you'd like I guess the old school guy and me, and I hear Terrio talk about. I mean the guys had to hate striking out, they have to. You have to hate it. You got to you got to hate striking out more than you like uh, hitting a ground. You got to just hit a ground ball and get it through an infield. That's the way the old school thought process is. But the kids are being taught just a little bit different on launch angle and everything. So I think it is. I think we're caught a little bit in, in purgatory here. You're in between the two. And um, I think kids are learning um, how, to make, how to have a quality approach and also execute on a little bit of launch angle if that's what you're working on in the cage. So I do. I, do. I think when, when a guy can elevate up with a little bit of extra jump on the ball and you miss and then you've got to get it going up there and they drop a curveball or a change up in there, you're going to swing and miss, um, especially if you're trying to do any damage. So, and, and as a pitcher, I like that. You know, please show me you're going to be aggressive to the baseball because now I can pitch to you a little bit differently. Guys like Ryan Terrio were a pain in the butt's face because they, they'd foul eight, nine balls off, and, and all they were trying to do is stay alive and wait until you make a mistake. So I think guys get caught in between. You need a mix of guys like that in the lineup. I feel like the uh, the Giacomos and, and the Duplantises and those guys, man, they will strike out. It is you know part of uh, baseball. But those guys with that speed – hit a routine ground ball to short, and it's bang, bang at first, um, it starts to get in your head as a defense. And I think that's what the old school guys are talking about. It's not, hey, man, my three or four hole can swing and miss if they're trying to drive balls, but I can't have my one, two, my seven, eight, nine guys. I can't have them swinging through balls as often as they do. So I think it's a different approach for every guy. You're a longtime season holder, a season ticket holder for the LSU basketball program. I hate to box you in because I'm, I'm up, against a, uh, up against the break here. Would you renew it. your season tickets at the state of the basketball program right now? I will. Um, you know, I want to. I want to support the program. Um, you know, for the foreseeable future. But um, you know, and I hate to see that guy go if, if that's the, the cause and effect here. Um, but yeah, I, I love that LSU basketball, and I love going there. I'll talk to you next Wednesday. Thanks, man.